Hi everyone, Dr. Jimmy here. Today we're gonna to talk about two things. This and that. Do you have any idea? Let's talk about it. This shown here is essentially a cellulitis, which is an infection of the skin that causes redness, warmth, and swelling. This is an abscess. This is a painful collection of pus as a result of a bacterial infection in layers under the skin. As shown in the image, typically this lesion is fluctuant, meaning soft, or indurated, meaning firm, and may be painful. It may or may not have any redness. For these two skin infections, there may be some systemic uh, manifestations such as fever, chills, night sweats, body aches. There are multiple bacteria involved with this type of infections. The two common ones are known as the Staph aureus and the Streptococcal infections. Now, this is the case because these are the two most common bacteria that are found readily on the skin. In a nutshell, anytime there is an interruption in the skin barrier, that increases the risk of a cellulitis or an abscess formation. Obviously, punching a wall is a very easy way to acquire this or stepping on a nail or cutting yourself with a knife is a relatively easy way of acquiring these type of infections. But let's be a little bit serious and talk about some of the most common causes of these type of infection. These can happen as a result of an insect bite, a spider bite, a dog bite, a cat bite, skin abrasion, IV drug use, skin cut from shaving, skin conditions such as athlete's foot or eczema or psoriasis. These are all relatively common ways of acquiring a cellulitis or an abscess. For cellulitis, as shown in the images here, this is usually treated with antibiotic to be able to um, overcome these type of infection. Relatively simple way of managing this type of infection. For an abscess, this can also happen as a result of deep infection to the hair follicles causing what we, is known as a boil or a furuncle. In many cases, these boils coalesce together and, and become a, actually a bigger boil and leading to a bigger form of abscess. These are typically found on the back of the neck or the upper back, the armpit or the buttock area. One case I recently saw is, is shown in the image here where there was a significant uh, um, abscess in order to the upper back. This had been there for several months. For an abscess due to the collection of pus, um, the best treatment is to perform an incision and drainage, which is simply cutting into the skin to remove or to drain the pus. A pus is essentially a thick opaque liquid consisting of dead white blood cells, bacteria, and dead tissue. If there is a concern for a pus, the best thing to do is to see your primary care provider to perform an incision and drainage as I have illustrated here. Once the pus is successfully drained, typically there is no need for antibiotics because the source is already taken care of. As shown in the video, sometimes we may have to pack it with a material that will help absorb all the pus to help facilitate healing and prevent worsening of symptoms. There are some home remedies that can be performed if there is concern of a pus. Simple things you can do is to apply warm compressors. This actually softens the abscess and in some cases may open itself and start to drain. There are a lot of other homeopathic things you can do, but one thing I found very interesting is the castor oil. This actually consists of triglyceride that has antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. And I have personally seen certain patients benefit from this measure. This does not mean this is the only thing or the best way to manage this type of infection, but it is certainly something I thought I can share.
Now, abscesses and cellulitis are clinically managed relatively well. While we're on this topic, I must know there are some complications from these infections that we as clinicians will pay attention to to ensure that number one, you do not have it, and number two, if you do have it, to aggressively manage you. These complications are as a result of a systemic infection from the bacteria that is either causing cellulitis or abscess. What happens here is that the bacteria will actually travel through your bloodstream and move around throughout your entire body. This will in turn cause what we call bacteremia or uh, systemic infection. This can lead to end organ damage leading to what is known as sepsis or septic shock when you do not respond to it with aggressive hydration. Because of these bacteria circulating in the bloodstream, it can lead to an infection in the heart, what is known as endocarditis. It can also lead to an infection in multiple joints, also known as septic arthritis, or it can actually lead to a bone infection, which is also what is known as osteomyelitis. Overall, you need to be knowledgeable of what is an abscess or a cellulitis and seek clinical management as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out on the next one. Dr. Jima, I'm out.